Um, let's go ahead and jump over to some other stuff. Uh, Valve CEO Gabe Newell has confirmed that several single player games are in active mm-hmm. development. Uh, this precedes the release of 2020's Half Life Alex, a 13 year return to the series' is la- la- last entry back in 2007. Does anyone care about Valve working on new games? I sure as fuck do. I love Half Life. Um, well, I guess I, I doesn't include Left 4 Dead, but I, I could go for another Portal. <laughs> As long as I could go for a portal into the Valley of Gods, then I care. If it's not, then I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, that's about portal is pretty much all I care about. I, I really care. need I to play like Half-Life to Alex, and I will have I space like- for VR soon. I would like to know what's on the Borealis. Um, the, if, 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 yeah, that's it. Pretty much it. I honestly I don't even really care about Half-Life Three. Just what's on the Borealis. Well, wasn't there a? Uh, it was like the lead writer, so and he came out like forever yeah. ago, and he put mm-hmm. out like this whole spoiler for like Half Life. What Half Life Three was supposed to be? What was his? What was his Half Life Three, which was the original one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He basically posted like a fan fiction, which was what his Half Life Three was. He just changed the names of characters, but people couldn't mm-hmm. know who those characters were because yeah. he was like legally able to but- like posted under the name half-life so it's like oh i wrote this fan fiction that was really just like what he wanted half-life 3 but um but spoilers um i'm not spoiling sorry i'm not going to spoil anything but the end of uh mm-hmm. the end of alex changes a lot already I have, so. I have read what it is and i am very excited for the future of half-life yep i mean half-life I mean, is still basically thing- my go-to game just like i don't know mm-hmm. i have like 10 minutes what do i play on my pc like half-life 2 is still one of the best games of all time I mean, the only thing I can ask is that they don't make their fucking games VR exclusive because I can't play Half-Life Alex. I because I get sick as soon as I throw the VR headset on. So I it's think- and plus people with dis with disabilities who can't use VR won't even be able to play it either. So I if Valve does what like Sony did, where when they released like VR only PlayStation 4 games and then like two months later they got non VR patches. That's what I'm hoping Valve does because there is mods that allow you to play Alex without VR, but it's kind of janky because it was mm-hmm. meant to be played only in VR. Mm-hmm. So I can only hope that some of these like single player games coming out, one of them is just Valve's like non VR version of Half Life Alex. So I can actually play that game and enjoy that that game instead of like having to drop six hundred dollars on a headset that I'm never going to use because I don't want to throw up all over my apartment. <laughs> I th- I think I'm in the same boat in that. I really want them to make it doesn't like obviously the quality is not going to be the same if they make what's basically just a 2D panel version of the game. But specifically for them targeting, I'm going to use VR only in quotations because I do want that version that people can play on 2D panels, even if it's not as polished or there's some bugs, whatever, where everything just doesn't function. I I still want those versions to exist either way. Um, But Half-Life Alex, from what I've seen and what I've read people talking about, I haven't experienced it myself, but because they take what's so inherently special about VR and using it in such a way that it's not necessarily able to be replicated via normal methods of input, like even on a keyboard. So I, I think that they're really pushing the medium forward and that VR is absolutely going to be the future of games. And unfortunately that that side effect is that there are people that are going to be left behind and that's they should and that people that and instead of leaving people behind they you should make versions that people can still play yeah i basically. mean the whole like leaving people behind is not what gaming is about because gaming is meant to be for every everybody that includes if you have a disability or if you don't and the fact that like it's great that valve wants to push vr and i'm totally off for vr becoming bigger but even like one of the biggest vr chat services which is vr chat has a non-vr mode because they know people not many people not a lot of people can use vr so i feel like we should start becoming more accustomed and more understanding that vr games are going to come out and they're going to be vr for like the maybe the first year like the first couple of months but then that that they should have non VR patches after them. And again, I think Sony's a great example of that where they put out a bunch of VR exclusive games, which was fine. But then months down the line, they, they included free non VR patches with those, with those games. And of course I've, I've read articles of people from valve being like, Oh, well it was never meant to be played without VR. It's like, well then you're shutting off a fan fan base of people that a can't use VR because of a disability B can't use it 
because they're like me who just have severe motion sickness and just who can't or C people who can't afford a $600 VR headset. Like, I just think that, yeah, it's great to be pushing the medium like they are. And I think it's the future, but the future should also be friendly to those who can't catch up with the future. Mesa, you're a big uh, VR user slash proponent. So what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I'm in, I'm in many camps. I do want, you know, as many people to be able to experience these games <laughs> as possible. And if VR is a hurdle, then we have to, we have to understand and deal with that. But at the same time, I don't, not saying that it would, but you know, if hmm, I don't, I don't want it to limit what VR can be though. Um, and I don't think it can. I just think that pe- that yeah. people that VR games should also understand the fact that they have a lot of hurdles to get people to mm-hmm. even play their games. And mm-hmm. I think you understand like, oh, like, yeah, we'll have it VR exclusive for the first year. But then after that, we're going to drop this patch that makes it playable without VR. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. go ahead, Mesa. Mm-hmm. Under- yeah. Under- yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, like, like, like for me personally, like with my personal VR headset, like, I, like I don't use it very often, not because I don't want to use it or I can't use it, but because I mean, because it's um, because uh, it's a uh, it, it, my personal VR headset is pretty uncomfortable for me, pers- and um, it looks like most on the market are going to be uncomfortable for me, so I'm just kind of stuck with waiting for one that's good for me. Um, 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 and so like, uh, I kind of, I, 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 I understand, um, cause like I haven't played Half-Life Alex either. Um, um, though at least, at least with VR, the, the price is coming down quite a bit, um, with like the, you know, like the Oculus Quest 2 being just two ninety nine, and that's an independent headset that you can connect to your computer if you want to, um, but so yeah, um, with the price coming down, I think yeah, the price is coming down very uh, in a very good way. Um, but usability, yeah, I, I, I just, I guess, I'm just afraid of a developer deciding not to do something because it would be harder to translate to keyboard and mouse or controller, right, and. I don't want that, but I still want everyone to be able to experience everything. So I, I guess that's a little bit of a crossroads here. Right. Uh, what about you, Corey? Have you tried VR or anything like that? Uh, so I have a PSVR. Um, I haven't actually hooked it up in a long time. Um, but uh, for what I have played, um, you know, like Beat Saber and like um, other just sort of like smaller games here and there um it, it was fun I, I really i really think the most uh addictive one and and the most um common one that i can play is beat saber because it's just so much fun um but uh other than that uh i haven't really got uh gotten uh, too many chances to play vr and i never really got a chance to play um half-life alex mostly because i also wasn't super into the half-life series um, I, I actually never even played it, so, <laughs> but that's just me. I'm going to get a lot of gasps for that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going to silently judge you. Mm-hmm. I, I played the, I played Half-Life when it came out on, uh, I think it was the orange box, like way back in 360 and PlayStation 3 days. Mm-hmm. That's when I played it. And I feel like it's one of those games where I like how I feel about like the Beatles where I understand what they did for music and that's great. Like good for you. I'm just not into them. Same, same with half-life. I know what it did for gaming. I played them all. It's just not my thing. Like I find it honestly kind of boring and I find Gordon Freeman kind of boring. (laughs) I I I will, I will extrapolate from that. Silent protagonists are boring as shit. Like, because it's like they expect you to care about him so much when like everyone else around him is like leagues more interesting. And it's I like will say, <laughs> I will say Half-Life 2 specifically 
is a good game to play if you're bummed out because every single person you talk and they're just like, holy shit, it's Gordon Freeman. You're the shit, dude. Holy crap. It's you. You're a legend. So I'm just like, yeah, I am. <laughs> see, every time I see that, I just hear like AOL dial up noises behind Gordon Freeman's eyes. I just hear like, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> it's just like, I, like I, 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 it's great that Half-Life Alex is really great. And I'm here for everybody who was super excited about it and who got what they wanted out of it. I just think that it's a good and a bad example of good how VR can be, but also bad of how VR is restricted from so many, from like so many people. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. 